Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I had a poll recently, and the overwhelming majority, or I wouldn't say overwhelming, but a pretty good chunk, uh, wanted me to go over his book, Terrence Howard's book, uh, to do a part one on reviewing his book. Let me just tell you, like this, this is not an easy task by any stretch of the imagination, because it's... I am going to go through these two pages, or possibly one page. I'm not sure why he has, like, two pages on one. But just looking at this thing, I mean, it starts off, he's got a letter to the world, for one. And then he's got, on the opposite page, he's got a meme. And this is his meme. They've got us surrounded. Those poor bastards. Let's read this letter to the world. Dear world. I have been told by many that the releasing of this truth may cause certain challenges in my life. For there are many institutions that this truth will be viewed as disruptive to their system of profit and gains. I want to live a happy and peaceful life, and I pray for longevity. Not just for me, but for our entire species. Know that I would never harm myself, nor anyone else for that matter. A weird detail to put in there, I admit. Um... Nevertheless, if my life has to face certain challenges so that this planet can be saved, please do not let these tr uh, trials that I may have to face be in vain, and pray for me as I am praying for you. Sincerely, Terrence Deshaun Howard, May 25th, 2019. Um, and then he's got another quote here from himself. I may be climbing on rainbows. <laughs> <laughs> That doesn't give anyone else, like, LSD vibes. Because it climbing on rainbows, okay. I'm, I'm not um, making any accusations here, but it sounds like someone that I once knew that did a lot of acid. I may be climbing on rainbows, but baby, here goes. <laughs> it, <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> It should never occur that the square root of a number, when added to itself, produces a result greater than the initial number squared. <laughs> what, okay, why? That, that usually, if you're, this is like a math book, that usually comes with a proof. So, bold statement. Very, like his confidence there. So, for that would expose a loose thread within the fabric of mathematics. A loose, a okay, quote, unquote, is a quote within a quote. It's like conception. A quote, loose thread capable of unraveling the very ground rules of mathematics, and consequently ensuring the collapse of any system that is based upon its foundation. Insuring? Like insurance? I think that that, I think maybe he means ensuring with an E. Did, <sighs> this book's been out for a while. Like, no one's proofread this. No one told him that. Insuring. Correct me if I'm wrong. Doesn't that in, doesn't that usage right there mean, like, insurance? Insuring the collapse of any system that is based upon foundation. That's, that's a quote from the author of this book, which, again, is a weird thing to do. Usually you quote other people. So I don't know why there's got to... First of all, there's the cover page. Great. Allow me to enlighten you. There's this section, which we're going to get into. He's got his letter to the world. He's got his, this little meme here. I'm not sure if that's an original Terrence Howard meme. Somebody in the comments, let me know. Is that a, is that a meme you've seen somewhere? Did Terrence Howard steal it for his book? Like, what's going on there? And that on the PDF, again, that's page three. Now I'm on page four, which is more about the author stuff. I haven't even gotten to about the author yet. And then we're like six or seven pages in. So he's climbing on rainbows. He goes, one, two, one. <laughs> he does number one. I'm right here. A treatise on one times one equals two. Uh, for one times one to equal one creates a direct violation of all natural law. All natural law. Bold. Bold statement. And contradicts Newton's law regarding action and reaction, and laws governing conservation of energy. So, again, he equates mathematical definitions and mathematical statements with physical laws, which is a really weird thing to do. Um, I think that that might have 
been from his study of the Pythagoreans and numerology and, and weird stuff like that. Um, so again, that's that's not going to be proven in these pages. I've I've seen the the, the document. It's proof. It's it's ridiculous. It's really stupid. And again, simple equations which don't even have letters. Like no. <laughs> You know, I feel like I'm being nitpicky here, but, you know, most famous physical equations and physics and math and stuff, most of them have letters, not not numbers. So, yeah, yeah you couldn't even bother, you know, there's no, there's no variables in this equation at all. It's just, it's just facts about, <laughs> it's just facts about numbers, some of which are not even facts because they're incorrect like this. So that's that's incorrect. This is incorrect. Um, and again, he misquotes Newton's law regarding action and reaction. It's that every Newton's third law of motion, which is every action has an equal and opposite reaction. That's one action. He tries to say an action times an action. What does that mean? Doesn't mean anything. Number two, a treatise on the Platonic solids being illusions. Okay. <laughs> and universally, a set of non-sustainable, incomplete, and now obsolete geometric structures. All space is curved, thereby making it impossible for a straight line to come up to come into existence. The platonic solids are only optical illusions. So that's a that's a bold statement there as well. I mean, these this is just full of bold statements, and there's no proof. There's no proof. This thing's what one one hundred and sixty two. We're not going to find anything. Trust me. Okay, he hates the platonic solids. He's got a he's got a big vendetta against platonic solids. He's not a big fan. He says they're non-sustainable, they're incomplete, and they're now obsolete. I sort of agree with the fact that they're obsolete because we don't, you know, we don't live in the time of Plato, and they don't represent air and earth and wind and water and all that stuff. So, okay, I wouldn't say that they're optical illusions. That's a that's a weird thing to say, and I don't know why he's obsessed with them. Number three. Finally, a treatise upon the previously undiscovered geometry that properly defines the magnetic field, the electric field, and redefines what we call space slash time. Or maybe it's space over time? Space time? Space slash time? Space over? I'm not, not sure that's space over time because up here he says, he does that, like, that same... The notation to mean division, even though he doesn't use it here. Again, weird. So, um, yeah, that's what this book is. It's in three parts, folks, in three parts. It's uh, quite the summer reading um, about the author, takes up quite a bit of this. The human family. So about, yeah, about the author, hello. Who, who starts it with hello? Hello, I'm Terrence Sean Howers. Conceived, I was conceived sometime, oh God. My parents might have been listening to This Guy's in Love by Herb Albert because, <laughs> because that was the number, why, well, yeah, uh, I, I, I am a manifestation. <laughs> I am a manifestation of all collected states of matter. <laughs> a manifestation of all collected states. Of I am aware of who I am. I make no excuses for what I am, nor for my over curious nature. I accept my being, and I know that in order for me to occupy this particular place in space slash time, every wave within the universe has to have cosigned my existence and must likewise be aware of my being in some cosmic sense or another. 
every waveform in this universe flows through me and into every other waveform for that matter. This is a weird about the author section. Uh, this book is about the illusion of matter. The illusion of matter, y'all. Every wave is dependent upon my existence. <laughs> this can't be real. The, every wave is dependent upon my existence and my particular crest and trough, my spin, my charge, as I am likewise held together by every other wave that is. Yeah, that's the end of that sentence. I am necessary in order for all other things to be. Wow. This, I'm not making this up. Like, I am necessary for all other things to be. And everything else is necessary in order for me to be. I don't, I don't think I agree with either one of those. I don't think I agree with either one of those notions. He's necessary for everything else. Okay, that's definitely not true. Everything else is necessary for him. Now, how is some random person that you've never met necessary for you to exist? We are all one. Uh, okay. LSD. I am the father of five children. I, well, I, don't I haven't any formal training in the field of mathematics. You don't say. You don't say. Nor do I hold degrees in any of the sciences. Nor do I hold degrees in any of the sciences. What I do hold is a deep respect for all created things. And I have spent nearly five decades utilizing the tools of common sense. <laughs> wow. Which doesn't seem to be so common these days. This is the least self-aware thing that I've ever read in my life. Jesus, it goes on. I'm not going to read this whole thing. Uh, there you go. Boom. Pause the video if you care to. I'll get the link in the description, actually, of this atrocious... This book is just... This is just next level. You want to know a secret? If you know one thing about one thing, then you know one thing about all things. That's not true either. Okay, that let's break that down. If you know one thing about one one thing, then you know one thing about all things. That's not true. That's the, the complete misuse of, of logical quantifiers. He's a, the existential, the universal quantifier. One thing, all things. Those don't mean the same thing. Ugh. This book is just so full of logical errors. It's ridiculous. Find the common factor, and you either multiply by it or divide by it. Okay. Then, okay, and then there's a dedication to his wife. And another a quote from Walter Russell and some photography. Then, by the seventh page of this PDF, now we're at the table of contents, and we're at pictures of, of every... Section, which, by the way, this is the most un—I saw the word unbalanced. This is the most unbalanced tale of contents that I've I've ever come across. It's just read some of these things here. What do we have? He has the audacity to teach us mathematics 101, basic principles of mathematics. Period. He has got a periodic table of elements. Guess guess who that came from? Sound. It's wave dynamics, electromagnetic. Laws of thermodynamics. He's going to explain laws of thermodynamics to us, guys. A brief history of Babylonian logic and a glimpse into their daily lives. The daily lives of Babylonians. We're, <laughs> we're going to learn about that in this, in this tome. The conditions of one, the world's departure from the gold standard? What does that have to do with anything? Common sense and mankind's hastened departure from it. Wow. A crash course in particle physics. Great. Terrian wave fields, the linchpin, common factor of all things, the flower of life, the garden even universal mathematics, uh, the fruit from the sacred tree of life. So more more religious stuff. Tetrian, Terrian wave, all the stuff that he named after his kids and all that, invisible states of matter. Uh, and that's that's his table of contents. So wow, wow on that. 
so yeah, this is not a small feat by any stretch of the imagination. But I do think that it's worth going through this and really putting it to the giving some mathematical eyes on it. Anyway, uh, stay tuned for more updates. Thanks, everyone. Have a good time.